If you grew up in rural Kenya, commonly known as shags, you probably had a couple of chicken running around the homestead. They are the most popular bird kept by our various communities. Kenya has an estimated poultry population of 31 million birds. Of these, 75% consist of indigenous chicken, 22% of broilers and layers, and 1% of breeding stock. This means that poultry farming plays an important role in fulfilling the nation's nutritional demands. On today's show, we will be focusing on broiler chicken farming. Broilers are raised intensively for 40 to 50 days, mainly for white meat only. This farming venture is common in most urban and peri-urban areas around the country and a favorite for beginner farmers who do not want to spend a lot of initial investment. Benina Munene, a resident of Murera Ward in Roiro, Kiambu County, ventured into broiler farming way back in her early 20s with only 100 birds just after getting married. The story of her journey is one of a kind. So when I finished college, I went doing my other things. Then I went back to chicken farming as I was doing other things and I started keeping more. That was in the... In the maybe in the in the 2010s and also and then the the market was very bad my major challenge was was uh, first of all knowing which feeds to use and uh, when they, they they finally grow where do you take them the market was really bad it was the fluctuation was a lot i think there were no many people uh, eating chicken then because we you, you could, uh, for, for like 700 uh, uh, birds, you could sell even over, for over two weeks. You know, you get a hundred, uh, market for a hundred here, a hundred uh, there, and you're taking so far. So at the end of the day, you're not making anything. So marketing was my major challenge. Diseases was another challenge. We went out of business. I even went uh, back to college, and then now we are, uh, we are. I'm back to farming now, and I think now it's bigger and better. First of all, I have more experience. I have bigger support. Then in the 2010s, I was still using unga feeds at some point, but I didn't get the support like the one I'm getting now. Now I'm getting a lot of support from Unga. Actually, I, I, <laughs> I think Unga is my biggest partner in this. Most beginner farmers venturing into broiler farming more often than not experience the same challenges as Penina did. Don't rush into poultry farming without the proper information. Remember the quail scandal? First of all, I would not ask anyone to go into chicken farming if you don't have the passion for it you've got to have the passion for it because it's like you get you're in touch with your chicken you know when they are not feeling well when something is going wrong so you start with having that passion then uh, yes I agree with you it's quite capital intensive um, so you need to have some capital but you don't have to have much you can start small because chicken business is where you can start, you can start at where, whatever point. You can even start with 50 pieces. As long as you have the structure, you, you, you go increasing. Like even me, I, I, I didn't start with uh, the, the number I have now. I started small, you go increase. The good thing about it is that they take only five weeks. So five weeks, you sell that, you make money, you, 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 you go getting bigger. Yeah, so anybody, anybody can do chicken farming as long as you have the passion. Space should not be a limiting factor because chicken do not require so much. You cannot compare chicken farming with dairy farming or any other farming. You're just putting a structure in your small place. My, my plot is a quarter and you can see I have my house and my chick, two chicken houses and I have still some space for, space for more, I can even go up. 
So space should never be a limiting factor. Yeah. And uh, feeds, feeds you get from the market. It's not like dairy farming where you go looking for grass and napier grass everywhere. Note that what works for farmer A may not work for farmer B. There is no problem that you might come across in broiler farming that is new. In one way or the other, they have been overcome. For Penina, her advice is simple and clear. Do not let outsiders get into your chicken house. Do not let animals, birds, especially birds, uh, dogs, cats, things, uh, animals get in, into your chicken house. If you have two, like I have two houses here, if you have two houses, make sure your, your shoes, you either disinfect your shoes when you're getting into either of the house or you use different shoes for every house. Waste management. Your chicken house should never be wet because when it gets wet, they get sick. You, your chicken house should never be wet Try to, although that, that again goes back to capital, try to automate as much as possible. Like the water, try to automate it. Don't, don't let your equipment, like the, water, the, the watering uh, equipment, get dirty or water stay there for too long. Yeah, so chicken house require a lot of hygiene. As they grow big, older, they require even more air. So you start with the, with your brooder that is closed because when they are small, when they are a day old or something, they, 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 they require a lot of warmth. But as they grow older, you go opening and at, at three weeks, the house should be open. And especially these uh, three phase formula feeds, they require a lot, the chicken grow very fast, so they require a lot of air. If they don't get a lot of air, they, they, they get uh, water belly disease and they, they, they die of heart attack very fast when they are between four and six weeks. Dr. Joseph Jenga from Unga Farm Care East Africa is one of the team members mandated to offer technical support to poultry farmers in the central Kenya region. In this particular region, the, the key pillars that we do focus is the poultry itself, the management, and the environment. So of importance here, we start with the, the chick itself. Most of the farmers just source their chick anywhere. The chick that you are not sure how they are, so you are not sure of their performance. So if you get the wrong chick, even as you rear them, you will not be able to realize the full, the full benefit of that uh, system. So what we do, you find some farmers don't even know how, how to brood or what you call the placement of the chick. They just come, get the chick, put them in the house. So they begin problem when they are still young. And it's very hard to correct that problem at the old age. So another problem we encounter is the housing, the poor housing. You find the house does not meet the spec that the broiler, broiler birds want. The other one is the equipment in the house. That is the feeders and the drinkers. You find some are inappropriate, others the number are very few. Also the spacing in the house, you find some of the bars are overcrowded, so also the performance will be, will be affected. The another problem is the disease control. Most of the farmers only concentrate on, the, on feeding, but not on the disease control. Some are supposed to be vaccinated, some farmers don't vaccinate. Others are supposed maybe to to be catered by biosecurity. Farmers are not aware of biosecurity. So with such problems, you find it is a bit hard for a farmer to realize the full potential. Penina is proud to have Unga Farm Care East Africa by her side. She explains further on the do's and don'ts at her broiler farm. First of all, when they come, when they are a day old, there is a, the litter, you, you, you need to spread shavings. So you spread shavings and uh, and, and uh, you give multivitamins, day one, and glucose. And uh, between day one and day three, you use uh, liquid paraffin to make sure they don't get constipated, just a few drops uh, on the water. Uh, and then now it's feeding, feeding. Oh, and, and then there's heating. 
it depends on what you're using for heating. I use charcoal, I use a bruder jiko. So there is also charcoal for, for, for using on the bruder jiko. Then, uh, then there is vaccines. I use, uh, I, 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 I administer Gumboro and Newcastle vaccines. And that's about it. I only use um, medication when they are sick, which rarely happens. If you, if you follow the, the, the way you're supposed to keep chicken, there is no people getting into the house, there is no, the, 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 it's dry. The, the chicken will not give you any problems with diseases. You give uh, the vac you vaccinate properly, you don't get any problem with the diseases with chicken. Injections, I have never had to inject. I don't know chicken are injected for what. I have never had to use that.